Hello, thanks for joining me. This is my first look at Blue Star Linux. Now, Blue Star Linux, they have their own page on SourceForge. They don't have like an actual website, but they have a page on Blue Star Linux on SourceForge, and it describes it as a arch-based distribution built with an understanding that people want and need a solid operating system that provides a breadth of functionality and ease of use without sacrificing aesthetics. And that's what we see right here. We got a really nice looking desktop because of the way that the widget is nice and readable over top of a nice looking wallpaper. Icons are already organized for us. It's got the latte dock at the bottom. Looks really cool. I haven't seen the latte dock in a while. I think it's called latte. And this is running on top of KDE. So it kind of feels different than a standard KDE setup where you got the bar running across the entire bottom. Kind of gives me a Pop! OS mixed with, I don't know, um, Nobara Linux. I don't know. It's got, it's got a really cool look. So it looks great the way they theme it, and I like it. So that's what they strive. Or they, that's their mission statement, I guess, if you will, on their uh, SourceForge page. It says, Blue Star can be installed permanently as a robust and fully configurable operating system or a laptop or desktop system, or it can be run effectively as a live installer that supports addition of persistent storage for those who choose not to perform a permanent installation. Thinking of kind of like maybe the Slackware and live CD type Linux distributions. Kali Linux, maybe? I don't know. Blue Star Linux software repository is also maintained in order to provide additional tools and applications where needed. So it sounds like they really have a good support system set up here. It provides the following features. An up-to-date kernel. That's great, because right now my this is running on bare metal laptop hardware. It's about a six-year-old laptop. It's running perfectly on it. A wide variety of applications, always current versions, full development, desktop, multimedia environment. So first off off the bat, this is KDE, but again, it's got the Latte doc running here in place of the KDE taskbar, if you will. But also, it's set up for a single click. That drives me crazy. That's something with KDE I've never liked to have enabled, but that's something you can disable. That's the beauty of Linux and customization. So I can change this later on. I'm not going to waste your time doing that now, but I can do that in the settings. So yeah, single clicking. I feel like I can mess up stuff. I love this little auto hide bar up here because this is where your notifications obviously it looks like are and oh 26 updates available if i click that I, I thought i already installed the updates oh nice okay so <laughs> that was really fast so will it say that they're installed now i don't know so i just do i just hit enter do i just close this i guess i close this okay so let's see if I click this again. Okay, cool. So it doesn't have anything about updates. It finally caught up with the fact that I already did update it. This is the recycling bin or trash can. System settings. Pigeon. Pigeon Messenger. I haven't used that in years. Firefox. I'll probably change that to Brave or Vivaldi or Florp or one of those other lean browsers that has good security built in. FileZilla, and, and Mozilla Firefox has great security built in. I love Firefox as well. LibreOffice Writer, VLC Media Player, right out of the box. Nice. I love it. And it's got GIMP right out of the box. Console, okay. Dolphin. So far, so good. So where do we find the apps? Let's see, can I poke around? This looks like the KDE menu shrunk down. There it is up at the top. And we got development. We got, this has got a lot of stuff. Way more than I thought it would have. JEdit, I'm not familiar with. Okay, cool. Looks nice. Let's go back here to the programs. Education, mathematics. Okay, that's math. These are very well sorted. Card games. All right. We should see GIMP under here. Yep. Gwenview and Ocular. These are all great programs. Very good selection, I must say. And Pigeon, Thunderbird, okay, yeah. I'm not really using that lately, but it's here. Amarok, oh, I haven't used that in years, but I love that music player. And we got, we got a lot of Office apps showing up here. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they have ones that I already use. Uh, I don't see Obsidian. That would be funny if that was there. It's not open source, but it's a great app that I'm going to install. I think I might test this one as my daily driver. This is really cool. I'm a fan of KDE, 
but I like this customized, customized version of it with the latte dock. Let's see what happens if we go to system and then, or um, where was I just at? System, I thought it was. Utilities. Let's go to utilities and latte, see what that brings us to. So you can kind of customize the latte dock here, it looks like. Blue star. Okay, cool. I'm not going to mess with that now. But my gosh, this has a lot of apps. Settings. We got core control. Don't even know what that is, but is it a processor core control? Let's type in our password. Global profile. It is for the processor. See, I got an i5 here. This is pretty scary. No, no, I don't want to mess with that right now. I don't want to crash the computer, have a kernel panic or whatever you call it, and mess up my session and recording here. But wow, all of these utilities, this is massive. We got Kate, which is one of my favorite text editors with numbered lines. Let's go to new file. See, you can see every line is numbered. That's cool. And let's go back to look up here. And HP Device Manager. This is interesting. Wow. Okay, let's go to that and see what it brings us to. So it's just a front end for CUPS, common Unix printing service. And, okay, this is cool. This is very cool. It... it, it They've done a great job of making this user-friendly, I would say, of getting you apps that you might already need and, and you don't have out of the box of an Arch. You don't have much of anything out of the box of an Arch install. you got to know what you're kind of doing, but they have done it. I would say this ha comfortably has more apps than Manjaro. It installed extremely quickly. I noticed that. Kind of like Pop! OS. It installed very fast. Blue Star Linux installer. I'm not sure why I'm seeing that again because I did already install it off USB. Let's see what happens. So I can install it onto itself. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand why this shows up still. I would probably remove this just for cleanup. You know, I've seen this happen on older distributions randomly. Let's check out their donate page. It's just directly right into a PayPal. Wow, very cool. So, you know, I'd like. I'd recommend checking this out. And if you think it's worth it, send a few bucks. Everybody, you know, if you just send even a dollar or something. The more people that do it, it adds up, right? And I'm going to check it out and use it, see how stable it is. Install a few music apps, play some songs on here, play some YouTube, see how hot the laptop gets. You know, streaming YouTube and that is probably the main processor eating activity on my computer nowadays. YouTube in the browser uses quite a bit of RAM, and I'm going to try that out and see how it, how it streams just the videos. I'm already using nearly two gigabytes of RAM but I kind of feel like Linux is just good at using RAM when it needs it. It's going to use more RAM if I have more RAM. And on this machine, I do have 24 gigabytes of RAM. Kind of a weird number. It's not matched RAM sticks, but heck, I could use it, right? doesn't hurt to have some extra RAM. So I hope this was informative and maybe helps you decide if you want to check this out. There are different looks. So I must say I did not run through the installer on here, but there are different uh, themed layouts that you could depict during the install, like the 2022 version, the 2021 version. They had different looks for their desktop, and it was really cool. I, I kind of wish I could just toggle between them quickly. Let's see if we go through global theme, if any of those themes appear there. Wow, this is cool. This is really fast. I don't know. Everything's just loading really quickly on here, and I'm impressed. Okay, so let's try purple tree. Do everything. Let's just go for it. Let's, I'm not going to break anything. All right. What did I do? Did I do anything? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's open up a file explorer. I don't think I really did anything. Okay, great. Well, anyway, I'd like to mess with this a little more. Let's try... Appearance settings, apply. Let's see what this does. Can anyone, you know, in the comments, if you want to tell me what the hell I'm doing, because I don't know <laughs> as far as the theming is going. I don't know what's going on here. I 
I might have to get a better understanding of this, but yeah, I'm kind of like breaking down the themes and looking at the settings, but I feel like if I check all of this and I apply it, it should apply to all settings, but it kind of flashes and then just comes back. There we go. It did something there. It changed the wallpaper, but I don't see it changing the window decorations. So let's go to window decorations and pick it individually. See what happens. If I do breeze. Okay, that worked. Maybe it's just so subtle that I'm not noticing it. I don't have any kind of designer graphic design chops at all. So I could be missing it. I could just be not noticing it. So my bad if I am. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. Bye.